All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this afternoon, Sharko and I are going to be talking about uh, some experiences deploying Neutron at scale. Uh, and uh, my name is Scott Drennan. Uh, I work for Nuage Networks. And Sharko is uh, the chief of SDN architecture for China Mobile Cloud, uh, part of the uh, China Mobile Group. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Shako. Uh, I'm the chief SDN architect in China Mobile Public Cloud. I designed several large SDN networks in China Mobile Public Cloud and uh, Private Cloud. I'm here with Scott, joint president New Arch SDN deployment in China Mobile Public Cloud. I'd like to share our experience where, which we learned from China Mobile Public Cloud deployment. We hope this presentation can help your future deployment. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, <clears throat> China Mobile Public Cloud is top three public cloud provider in China. There are more than 2,000 nodes in our public cloud, and 1,000 computer nodes are using SDN for the networking and the NFV. And we plan to add 3,000 more computer nodes in 2017. China Mobile Cloud Public Cloud provide both IaaS and PaaS to the end user. Nuage is a SDN provider operate, offering network service for the VPC, Layer 2 service, Layer 3 service, Firewall as a service, Low Balance as a service, and VPN as a service, Security Monitor, and VPC into data center interconnection. Uh, here is the SDN and NFV architecture. Uh, China Mobile Public Cloud includes three tiers. The first tier is called Service Logical Management Tier. It manages the business logic of the cloud. We call it OP which is a portal to management, customer configuration, and service logic. We also use Nuage VSD to management the network policy. The second tier is the control tier. We call all the network source resource is, sorry. Sorry, technical difficulties. Okay. Yeah. All better. Okay. The second tier is called control tier. All the network resources are controlled and managed by this tier. Include network, subnet, port, security monitor, security group, virtual router, floating IP, and extra. The last tier is Nuage SDN and NFV. This tier implement and host all the SDN network connectivities. Now, here is the Nuage SDN deployment topo. We deployed 1,200 computer nodes into data center. One located in Beijing, we call it North-based data center. It has 500 computer nodes. Another is in Guangzhou, which we call South-based data center. 
or the two data centers has exactly the same architecture. For the management tier, we use the China Mobile customized Open, OpenStack Kilo as a CMS. All the network configure, configuration goes through standard Neutron API called via the NuArch plugin to NuArch VSD. Uh, the VSD manages policy down to the VSC controller. The VSC then pushed down to the VRS in each computer node. There are two pairs of SDN controllers deployed in each data center, and they are communicate using the MPBGP. Yeah. China Mobile Public Cloud offers very competitive uh, network features for the end user. First, we allowed the end user to self-design their own network in the VPC. TNets can select the network service like subnet, secret group, virtual router, virtual firewall, virtual load balance, floating IP, PAT, rate limiting, and VPN. Second, we leverage the China Mobile existed VPN backbone to connect the VPC to our one connection. We support MPLS VPN as a service to connect enterprise to the VPC via MPLS VPN. We also support multiple one from different operate connect to VPC via application based on routing. Third, we support very large network skills in our public cloud, 100 concurrent network provision, which means we support 100 end users to provision their VPC at the same time. Fourth, fourth fully distributed control, control plan and data plan, and no central point, and no traffic tribunal. Nodes expansion without service interruption. Now here is a list of uh, uh, which we are offering now in our public cloud. Um, we can see we have VPC service, redundant firewall service, redundant load balance service, redundant VPN, include site to site and remote access and a path and a floating IP and a rate limiting. Cross data center VPC interconnection. We also support hybrid cloud networking, VPC security monitor, MPLS VPN interconnection, lease line, interworking with IPS, IDS, and WOF, flow monitoring, Now, let's talk why we finally deployed NewArch in this field. First, the Stone Neutron cannot support large scale deployment when computer nodes are more than 200 servers. The network performance gets great degraded and very difficult to improve. Second, Neutron node stability cannot comply with our requirement. Third, the feature gap. No large scaled firewall deployment solution not support for low balance, VPN, and firewall redundancy. No bare metal solution. And no SSL VPN and MPS VPN solution. We also did spend many months to improve stock neutron, but we found there are still several issues we cannot resolve. And today, I totally blocked our deployment. Uh, here is some details about 
the nutrient scaling issues we found during our test, which we found it is very uh, difficult to improve. Uh, in our test, test environment, we put 500 computer nodes in the uh, same data center. We deployed uh, five control nodes with HA mode, uh, which include Nova, Kingstone, Glance, Swift, and Extra. We deployed three stock neutron with HA for RapidMQ database and a neutron sub. We split the NFV function from neutron nodes and put in dedicated physical cells. There are two DHCP nodes, VPN nodes, five VPN nodes, five load balance nodes. For DHCP nodes, we have OVS agent and DHCP agent. Uh, here is some issues we found out uh, in our test. Uh, in our test, we have rebooted the OVS agent uh, at a computer node. It will take 15 minutes to recover the service. This is under 500 compute and uh, uh, 20 VM per computer node. We when we reboot the DHCP node, OVS agent, it will take 17 minutes to recover the service. This is under 1,000 network and 1,000 subnet configuration. When we reboot DHCP node, DHCP agent, it will take 30 minutes to recover the service. It is under 1,000 network and 1,000 subnet. We report the VPN nodes OVS agent. It will take 47 minutes to recover the service. This is under 200 routes configuration uh, in, 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 the, in one node. So we were able to use NewArch SDN network to resolve all this problem. So Let's Scott to talk how to. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Sharko. Yeah. So, Sharko's outlined uh, some of the challenges that China Mobile faced in terms of scaling their their deployment, and they worked really quite hard at uh, making the the stock implementation work both on their own and with others uh, before finally giving in and. Uh, uh, taking a, a commercial solution. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, both how the Nuage solution works and some of the architectural choices that we've made that uh, could aid in uh, improving Neutron's uh, scalability in future. So as Sharko mentioned, uh, the Nuage solution has uh, three layers in it in addition to the OpenStack uh, connectivity. Uh, and I want to go into a little bit more detail about how those layers uh, affect the uh, uh, scale out of the platform and uh, how they improve the communication models over the reference implementation. So as you can see here, we've got OpenStack talking to the, the Nuage management plane. Uh, so when there is a request for a new port uh, that is passed to the Nuage management plane, the virtualized services directory, and it just sits there. And nothing further happens until a VM is in instantiated via Nova. And uh, Nova will pass the VM to a given uh, Nova compute node. And on the Nova compute node, we have the Nuage VRS, the virtualized routing and switching layer, which extends OVS to provide uh, additional functionality and, and capability. And it's sitting there listening to Nova waiting for uh, these requests. The event uh, occurs that a VM uh, is instantiated, and that request is taken from the VRS up to the controller layer 
uh, requesting information about what the policy is uh, for that particular port. In some cases, the controller may already know. If it doesn't, it will ask the directory. And this is a single message up from compute to controller and a, a second message up from uh, controller to directory. The directory passes down all of the information necessary uh, for the policy on that hypervisor or on that, on that virtual machine. And then the virtualized services controller decorates that with information about the networking because the controller layer is scale out uh, using multi-protocol BGP and knows the locations of all of the other uh, routers, networks, subnets, ports uh, on the compute nodes. So that scale out la layer is responsible for uh, a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of uh, connectivity. So we have a new VM that's appearing on a hypervisor. Uh, that hypervisor needs to know about it, as do any of the other hypervisors that may need to communicate because we're using uh, VXLAN tunnels to communicate between them. So it's the responsibility of the virtualized services controller to pass that down. That's a, a much more scalable model than uh, many requests going back to the uh, Neutron, Neutron SQL database, and we'll, we'll look at that in more detail. The other benefit that that gives using standard protocols such as multi-protocol BGP, like Sharko said, we can peer with uh, multiple, serv multiple service provider uh, instances and also between data centers using these standard protocols. So that allows for a much more uh, flexible connectivity model, fully programmable from Neutron. So going into a little bit more detail, uh, we have the Nuage plugin talking via a REST API to the VSD. There is an XMPP message bus to the scale out controller layer. And then on each compute node, we have uh, a Nuage VRS and a Nuage metadata agent. And I'll come back to uh, why that's important in a minute or two. So going back to uh, what happens when you try and scale out uh, the OpenStack native implementation. At the control plane, you've got the Neutron server, the SQL database, and the RabbitMQ message bus. All of these need to be talked to via multiple messages from any L2 agents on the compute nodes, L3 agents on the neutron nodes or DVR uh, systems, uh, the DHCP agent, and LBAS. So there's an awful lot of chatter on the message bus. And within Neutron, we've been making incremental improvements over the, in, in this release over release. But inherently, it's a, it's a flawed design, unfortunately. So the approach that we've used is th this scale out using MPBGP. We have an extremely high performance uh, controller layer. These are, these are quite lightweight, um, four gig, uh, uh, four, four vCPU controllers, and each pair of them can control up to 1,000 hypervisors. If you want, you can scale out uh, really quite significantly using that sort of, that sort of scale. And uh, as Sharko said, uh, at CMCC, there's a pair of these in each of, the, uh, in each of the data centers. These are responsible for any of the fan out. And we're using the same technology that we use in our internet routers. So millions of routes uh, are, are really a light snack um, in terms of uh, pushing information down. So it scales out really quite nicely. So that's, that's how things work at a high level. Uh, looking at some of the specific uh, neutron scale elements that uh, China Mobile encountered, we've got, uh, first of all, the scaling of routed subnets. Uh, in the reference implementation, we've got two choices. We can use a, a centralized network node or a series of centralized network nodes, 
or we can use, DV use DVR. In the centralized case, you're dealing with uh, a centralized uh, bottleneck where all traffic between uh, subnets needs to go up to the network node and back down. All traffic uh, needing to, to exit needs to go up to the network node and out. In the DVR case, you're dealing with a bunch of added complexity on every compute node, and every compute node needs a gateway IP on, on every subnet. And that's, that's okay in some cases, but especially for uh, people like China Mobile, where APAC didn't quite get the same generous IPv4 allocation that uh, uh, some people within uh, North America and Europe got. Uh, every IP address is valuable. So uh, burning IP addresses, whether they're uh, public IP addresses that are routed or floating IP addresses, uh, that's, that's a bad thing. So in, in the Nuage implementation, we fully distribute the routing uh, across all of the uh, nodes, but we don't add the complexity of DVR, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Key point here is the same gateway IP and MAC is used everywhere. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, which uh, compute node on a subnet you happen to be on, there's only one gateway IP. For floating IP, uh, a lot of the same challenges, I've already talked about most of them, uh, not only does each compute node require a gateway IP per subnet on DVR, I believe it still requires uh, an IP on each floating IP subnet, which again, uh, you're burning an awful lot of public IPs. There was some work to try and fix that, uh, and to the best of my knowledge, uh, that, didn't, uh, that didn't quite make it, uh, but uh, I still hold out hope. On the Nuage side, uh, floating IP is fully distributed, so the one-to-one -one NAT function occurs at the compute node. Uh, that means that uh, we do the header rewrite in OVS, and at that point, it's already on a floating IP. It can be handed off directly to uh, a gateway and routed out to the internet or routed wherever else you want. For security groups, when you add a new security group member, the Neutron server has to push that membership update to each compute that uh, is a member of that uh, tenant. That's a very expensive undertaking if you've got uh, hundreds or thousands of VMs in, in a tenant, uh, if you've got uh, hundreds of subnets. It used to be that that was uh, also very uh, burdensome on the compute node. That's better now uh, because uh, we've introduced IP set use on the OVS agent, so that's, uh, that's an improvement. But there's still a significant, sig bleh, significant load on the uh, Neutron server and database. In the Nuage implementation, there's a single update uh, from VSD down to the VSC layer, and uh, then the VSC uses its scale-out capabilities to uh, push things to each VRS. One key thing to note here, uh, and I meant to mention it earlier, but I didn't, this isn't a traditional controller in the way that if there's a new flow that's instantiated on a given uh, compute, the flow resolution needs to go up to the controller and back down. All of that intelligence lives on the compute in, in the VRS. So the controller is just responsible for pushing new policy information. I said I was gonna come back to metadata. In the reference implementation, uh, metadata from the compute needs to be decorated on, uh, by, by the Neutron server in order to have enough information uh, to make the call uh, into Nova. So there's, uh, a call from Neutron uh, on the compute to Neutron on the uh, controller to Nova. Uh, again, more load on uh, the Neutron database. If we can avoid that, that's probably a good thing. So in order to do so, we ensure that there's enough information at the compute that the metadata agent can make Nova API calls directly with no Neutron interaction required. 
Firewall as a service is another uh, very important uh, uh, point for China Mobile. Uh, and again, you're looking at a centralized bottleneck uh, for each of your firewall as a service nodes for firewall as a service egress or firewall as a service between subnets. Uh, same constraints in the Nuage implementation, we fully distribute these firewall rules down to each of the computes so you can communicate either between subnets through the firewall locally or out uh, into the wide world through the, uh, uh, with, without needing to go through uh, a firewall as a service node. So what does this mean from a design considerations perspective? I've mentioned, and many of you have seen this slide before, uh, OVS is complicated. You've got uh, Linux bridges, you've got VETH pairs, you've got network namespaces, you've got multiple OVS bridges. That means you've got uh, multiple context switches through the kernel, you've got multiple agents with independent config paths. Some of you may have been in uh, some of the earlier sessions about how to debug Neutron on, uh, uh, on the base, uh, uh, on, on the reference implementation. And if you haven't tried it yourself, it's worth trying because it's, it's really, really hard. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's actually a really interesting learning experience uh, because this is complex, but it does use a lot of Linux functions in uh, very interesting and creative ways, and you learn a lot uh, trying to walk through the data path. So that's a little side note. Um, in the Nuage case, because we're using a single OVS bridge with a complete series of rules, we can, for any given VM or any given port, just list the rules, uh, and we can also use standard OVS tools like OF Trace to say, okay, this packet's dropping, what rule is causing it to drop? So you're only looking in one place on the source compute. You can see where it, that it's left. You can see where it's gone. You can go to the uh, destination compute. Most of the time you don't need to do that, but from a troubleshooting perspective, it's uh, really useful when you do. So there was a slide that Sharko presented earlier about uh, the neutron reference performance. I've blathered on for uh, a number of minutes about architecture, but architecture is very nice. What happens when uh, you actually try and uh, compare performance? So here's the same chart that Sharko presented earlier showing the uh, four test cases. And there were a bunch of additional test cases in various other uh, flavors uh, showing recovery time. So instead of 50 minutes, you're looking at less than a minute uh, to recover from a reboot of a VRS at a compute node. Uh, same less than a minute. I say not, not applicable because D the DHCP agent is uh, distributed, but we reboot uh, a DHCP agent uh, on the reference implementation versus rebooting the OVS agent and the VRS again on, on a compute, again, less than a minute. Same thing, same thing, L less than a min minute each time. We can also reboot any uh, VRS node or in, any VSC node or multiple VSC nodes uh, and traffic continues to pass. Recovery time is uh, within a minute or two. VSD is a highly available cluster. You can reboot VSD nodes. Again, traffic continues to pass. Uh, things continue to work. So there's no um, failure mode where you're going to be dealing with loss of traffic for large numbers of minutes. Again, you try and avoid this in production situations, but there's always something that goes wrong eventually, and uh, being able to recover quickly is important. We, we've shown in the past uh, with containers, uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of containers spinning up and getting uh, uh, connectivity within uh, sub 10 minutes. So there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of room to scale this while still getting very good uh, recovery and convergence times. Another key point is 
Maybe I don't want just one rotor. Maybe I don't want just one OpenStack instance. How, how do I manage I, connectivity in that case? In the reference implementation, you've got lots of L3 agents. You've got lots of neutron nodes. Or in the DVR case, I, even more neutron nodes. And in order to route between them, you need to go out to external physical routers. That means those external physical routers need connectivity, they need routes, uh, and you've got traffic that's coming out of the rack up uh, often to the edge of the data center and back down again. That also means you're dealing with lots of routes in your physical fabric, which means you need a physical fabric capable of, of handling those routes. It's a whole lot simpler if you leave all of that to the overlay uh, and ensure that whether it's uh, floating IP to floating IP, uh, router to router, or OpenStack to OpenStack, you're going uh, through policy uh, and direct from one compute to the next. So in the OpenStack to OpenStack case, you can either do that with a single VSD layer uh, exposing multiple sites, or you can have multiple VSDs if you want uh, uh, full isolation, and you can still have uh, federated connectivity between a Nuage instance uh, uh, running under Neutron in Site 1 and on Site 2. So I said I would get back to what should we be doing uh, in the reference implementation. We need to do some more work on distributing the neutron control plane, uh, on making sure it's efficient, on minimizing the centralized network services, on providing efficient intratenant and intratenant routing, minimizing mass updates, minimizing traffic to that central database, and ensuring that, that there are ways to, simply, uh, to simplify the OpenStack interdata center net networking. So hopefully that was helpful, uh, showing how China Mobile has uh, made a, a really compelling uh, deployment in China using OpenStack. Any questions? So, yeah. to Christian. So this is, this is not dependent on any hardware. No, this, this does not depend on any hardware. This is purely software, and you can uh, uh, deploy it on top of whatever hardware you want. So uh, I threw up that slide with lots of things connected to lots of things, and there's only limited time, so I didn't talk about uh, hybrid cloud beyond multiple OpenStack instances. But yes, being able to connect out to other clouds, whether they are um, using proprietary hypervisors, public clouds, whether it's uh, AWS, GCE, those are important use cases as well. Uh, maybe I misunderstood. Are you using OBS in this deployment or replacing it with uh, new software? So we are using OVS. Uh, as uh, in, in the kernel uh, for, the, uh, for the data path, we are uh, replacing the OVS user space or overloading the OVS user space with uh, uh, extension capabilities. But in effect, uh, we actually did a presentation at uh, uh, the Open vSwitch, uh, the, the last Open vSwitch conference on how Open vSwitch could have extensions embedded in it to do exactly what we're doing. Uh, right now, we extend the uh, OVS user space, but ideally, that would be a pluggable model. OK, so in that case, why is there still an OVS agent in your uh, deployment? Why, so there is, there is not an OVS agent. If I said OVS agent in the, uh, in the, in, in the context of Nuage, um, oh, in the measurements. So in the measurements, I used uh, the same list of failures and then aligned them with the corresponding Nuage 
uh, failure. So in the case of the OVS agent, it said an OVS agent failure in the upstream. In the Nuage case, that was a reboot of the, or a restart of the uh, VRS service. It wasn't, uh, there was no OVS agent. Yes. Sorry, can you? The upgrades. So, uh, upgrades of each uh, component are uh, upgraded independently. Each Nuage release supports multiple uh, releases of OpenStack, so you have the choice of uh, upgrading OpenStack first, upgrading Nuage first, and uh, each upgrade is uh, entirely hitless until the point where you need to restart the VRS with, uh, with a new version. And in that case, again, you're looking at uh, less than a minute of, uh, of downtime, basically, to restart the service. So the question is, uh, what are the gateway options to get out of uh, uh, OpenStack in this model? And uh, there are a number of options. Uh, we can support, we, we provide a virtual gateway. Uh, we can also provide a, a physical gateway. And we also interoperate with uh, a number of uh, other hardware gateways. So. Uh, Arista, HP, Dell, Cumulus. Uh, we interoperate uh, with uh, all of the major uh, VPN uh, endpoints as well. So, oh, what did China Mobile use? <clears throat> so, uh, in the China Mobile case, uh, they were fourth. Foresightful enough to buy uh, a Nokia 7750 uh, VPN gateway. Yep. All right, we are officially out of time, so I uh, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>